Editing this video is going to be hell. Ugh. Yes, I know I'm really late to the party with this video, but admission time, I listen to pop music. I like a variety, but if I'm in the car and cruising along, yeah, it's going to be on a pop station most of the time. But this year, this past year, 2013, sucked for pop music. It, it ranged from some, either the stuff that was really mediocre or to just outright crap I didn't want to listen to. It, it was just not a good year for pop music. So. I'm going to give my take on the done-to-death cliché of looking over the hit songs of the year and giving my list of the ten worst of the bunch. And this year, oh, I've got a lot to choose from, and it was not easy to narrow this down. There were so many songs I just hated that I actually went on my Facebook page and begged people to send me some good songs, and yes, thank you. Those of you who did, thank you. <laughs> that was such such a refreshing change of pace, but okay. I'll make another video with my top favorite songs, and it was even harder to make pick out those because there were so few of them. But the rules I'm going to use for both videos, I'm only going to say this in this video, not going to repeat it in the next one. To be up for consideration, the song has to end the year on either Billboard's Top 100 Hit Songs of 2013 for Canada or the U.S. I'm a Canadian. I hear the Canadian list a lot more often, but most people tend to use the U.S. list as a reference. And basing this on Todd in the Shadows, if you don't follow him, he's worthwhile. I'm also going to include any song that was in the top 20 near the end of the year. And if Todd covered in his 2012 review any song that was would have qualified for this list, but he covered it already. I'm, I'm just not going to be on this list. So, Scream and Shout, Wanted, and One More Night, they're all awful. They're not here. Todd uses the metric of lack of good for his list. I can't do that. These songs that I've listed, they're ranked by how much I hate them. That's it. This is entirely subjective. This is entirely my opinion. I will try to justify why I hate them as much as I do, but if you like any of the songs I, I list, fine, go ahead, keep on listening to them. Just please, please don't make me listen to them. That's all I ask. All right. Now, I'm going to put a list of some other songs I considered in the description. I'm not going to go over them here, but before I get to the list proper, I do want to go over two songs that I'm awarding special prizes to. The first one is the why the hell do you all like this song award? I don't hate this song, okay? But I, I, I just don't get its appeal. That goes to Katy Perry's Roar, which finished at number 10 on both the U.S. and Canadian list. I've got to be honest, when I first heard this song, I laughed. Because I turned it on and it was getting to the, right to the chorus where she goes, I've got the eye of the tiger. <laughs> Of all the people who invoke Eye of the Tiger, Katy Perry is one of the last ones. For one, th this song, it doesn't sound anything like Eye of the Tiger. The lyrics are just empty nothing. Tell, okay, what pro tell me, you listen to the song, you people who like this song, what problems has she overcome? What has she done to overcome the problems? How is she different now than she was before? Good luck. Oh, and... Uh, she floating like a butterfly sting like Muhammad Ali. No, Katy Perry, you are not Muhammad Ali. Stop, 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 stop. Yeah, I just... Uh, I don't hate this song as much as the other ones, but... Why? How did... Why? What do you see in it? Please, tell me. Another one said, Dishonorable... Dishonorable mention going to a song that is almost exclusively Canadian. And that's going to Headley's Anything, which was at number 68 on the Canadian list. Now, Headley, and eh, they're okay. I actually really like their first big hit, Cha-Ching. Uh, but this one, this is a bit of a mess. I hear the chorus, and it's 
what are they doing with those instruments and fuck that I can do anything no oh. it's te the message seems to be it sounds okay at first like try do what do what you want don't listen to the people who are telling you you can't do it you can do it just go ahead and try the problem is as I interpret the song as I listen to it I hear them saying yeah do do this and don't listen to these people who tell you you should have a backup plan don't don't listen to the people who are trying to tell you to, uh, to keep your options open. They're just saying, no, just do what you want to do. And that, that's stupid. You, you should have a backup plan. Not, yes, give it a try for sure, but if it doesn't work out, what else are you going to do? This seems to be saying commit to it 100% and yeah, that's going to be your only option. And no, 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 but... Uh, that the chorus is what really gets me about this. Alright. Now on to the meat. These are the songs I really, really, really hate. So, at number 10, Hashtag That Power by Will I Am featuring Justin Bieber. Canadian list at number 67, Billboard list at number 95. I'm not a Justin Bieber fan, that shouldn't surprise anyone, but his chorus here is actually musically and lyrically fine. I don't mind the chorus, but then Will I Am comes in, and oh my, Will I Am sucks. He, uh, pe other people have pointed this out, Todd's pointed this out, it's the beat from Dirty Bit. Dirty Bit is awful. Why do you keep reusing the same awful beat from that awful, awful song. His writing's lazy. Oh, used to have this piggy bank, but now I've got a bigger bank. Oh, God. Horrible, horrible, horrible. It, it, there's nothing powerful about this. This smacks of laziness is what this smacks of. But, honestly, the main reason this is on the list is that idiotic Hashtag in the name. Stop that! Stop that, stop that, stop that. Number nine. That's My Kind of Night by Luke Bryan. Now, this only peaked in Canada at number 19, wasn't on the year-end list. Billboard, number 78 on the year-end list. Country rap songs need to stop being a thing. Here's the formula. Brag about getting a hot girl in your souped-up truck and having some country fun. It's lazy as hell, and this song is a prime example of the genre. It, it, how does anybody like this? There's absolutely nothing original in this song. Yeah, oh look, gonna get get this girl up in my car, and oh the car's all fancy. It's it's a it's a rap brag song with countryish countryish instrumentation. Now, you can make similar critiques about say Cruise or Boys Round Here. But at least Cruz is trying to compliment the girl, like, baby, you're a song. Okay, it's a rather stupid compliment, but whatever. At least it's a compliment. And Boys Round Here at least makes an attempt to sound like a country song. This, though, no, this is not country. This, uh, no. This song's so stupid, stupid, bad, ugly, ugh. Number eight. Love Somebody by Maroon 5. Now, I actually did consider putting Daylight on here, too, but that, that song is also awful, but I find Levine more douchey, if you can believe that, in Love Somebody. I, I mean, I don't like Adam Levine's voice, but you add the auto-tune to it, and it sounds like a robot. I can't, I'm not the only one who, who has pointed that out. I, I had no idea what the lyrics of this song mean. Is it a sex brag? But if that's the case, why is why is he saying that she's a hard act for him to follow? It, it it's a, this is a song that's written by some kind of studio hack, and it follows the complete hacks guide to lyric writing. Yeah, I'm not being very original in my critique. I know, I know, I know, I know. But oh, I hate Maroon Five. They they. They've done a few songs I like, but not before 
ever since Move, Moves Like Jagger, I don't think I've liked a single one of their songs. Can't remember the name of the song, their previous song that I actually liked. This, did, did, did that. Yeah, that, that one's pretty good. I'll, if, I'll look it up. I'll put that here. But, yeah, they... I need to stop hearing them, is why we're going going here. I, Maroon 5, stop! Stop! Go away! I don't believe Go away! You, you suck! I can't believe that song number 7 is this low. Yeah, my vision's getting blurry here. It, it's like I'm seeing lines everywhere. Yeah, yeah, it's Blurred Lines by Robin Thicke featuring T.I. and Pharrell. I, I, I hate this song. I hate this song. Oh, the beat to this isn't that bad. But the lyrics completely kill this song. I'm not a fan of Robin Thicke's voice either, but... Yeah, yeah, uh, but the lyrics... Are you familiar with Stone Temple Pilots' sex type thing? The, the lyrics for this song, for Blurred Lines and Sex Type Thing, are very, very similar. And Sex Type Thing is a song that's explicitly from the point of view of a rapist. It does not paint this rapist in a good light. I actually like Sex Type Thing because of that. But this song, th these guys have no idea what they're saying. Oh, they're, 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 there's this blurred line. I think you actually want to go out with me because you're a bad girl. And I can't believe that this was the number two song of the year in the in, on the Billboard U.S. charts and number one in Canada. Uh, y yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to spend any more time with the song. I just hate hate this song. And the vi the video is lame. I try not to judge it by the lame. Okay, the brunette's hot. No, no, no. Don't go on the brunette. Don't, 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 don't. You know what? I'm just going to talk about number five and six together. So number six, "Wrecking Ball" by Miley Cyrus. Canadian list number 33, Billboard number 18. And We Can't Stop, also by Miley Cyrus. Canadian list at number 32, Billboard number 17. I don't give two shits about the video, about Miley's persona as the, oh, she's crazy, yeah, I don't, don't care, don't care, don't care, don't care, don't care. She can do whatever she wants. I hate these songs in a vacuum. Maybe not entirely a vacuum, but you you know what I, I hope you know what I mean. I don't care about her persona. I don't care about how the what the video is presented. I don't like Miley's voice in general, generally speaking. But I'm also not trying to hate on Miley, although that does her not me not liking her voice does play a part of me not liking these songs. I'm going to be honest there. Her her new single, "Adore You," I actually think is fine. Uh, the guitar strings in the background, or the strings in the background, very nice. Her voice is very soft, very sincere. I, the the actual lyrical contents, not my thing. But that's just because that type of song usually doesn't appeal to me. the The song itself is fine, is where I'm going. I don't mind that song at all. These two make me want to rip my, out my eardrums. Wrecking Ball. I've heard some covers of this, and they're actually pretty good, so that's why it's number six and not... That's why these are in the order that they're in. I... I, I viscerally loathe We Can't Stop. But Wrecking Ball is... It, it's clunky. It's... What is it? Bash! Thud! Bash! Thud! And then Miley Squealy, I can't even like a Wrecking Ball! Okay, I'm not doing that right, but... Her, her voice and the production don't match the song, it's... But We Can't Stop is even worse, because she's doing that at the end there. Yay! Oh. My ear... My eardrums bleed whenever I hear that part of, the, part of it, but... It's also one of the most depressing party songs I have ever heard! Okay, oh, she's dancing with Molly, i.e. Eskasi, and she... Girls are in a line, waiting to do a line in the bathroom. They're, they're doing go kill the bath. Oh. oh, this this is not a happy song is where I'm going. And I, this is not, yes, there's a place for songs that aren't happy, but it kind, kind of presents this party atmosphere, but this doesn't make me want to party. This is almost suicidally depressing. And it really doesn't help that the, Production is by Mike Will Made It. Oh, God, that guy's stop, got to stop getting work. I've not liked a single song he's done. But we'll get to that. Spoilers. Number four. There are a lot of people who aren't going to like me for putting this on this list, let alone this high. Let Her Go by Passenger. 
Canadian list at number 61, Billboard list at number 97. Uh, I stand by not liking this song. But I've said before, people who follow me fairly closely, that I hate this song more than the two Miley songs. I, it's true. I really do. I loathe this guy's voice. I... That warble just... It, it's worse than Miley's to me. I, I cannot stand his voice. But the, the song itself, taught in the shadows, pointed this out. The melody is lazy. You think, but, but it's very, very nice. It's, it's a four-chord song. If you don't know what the four chords are of pop music, look it up. I'm not going to do that for you. But too many songs use that pattern of chords. It's unimaginative. There's nothing to it. And the lyrics themselves don't do the songs any favor. It's, the, the song is phrased as if it's Passenger telling a friend of his that, oh, yes, of course you didn't realize all this stuff, because, yeah, yeah you don't re didn't realize that you loved her until you let her go. Th that, what? How stupid are you? And, and then he doesn't make it any better when he says, everything you touch surely dies. Some friend... Oh, I know some people love this song, but why? Th this song isn't just lazy, it's insulting. Number three, I'm not going to have very much to say about, because I think the song itself doesn't tell you very much anyway. Started at the Bottom by Drake. Canadian list at number 98, Billboard list at number 32. I'm going to quote the rap critic here, and I encourage you to check out his, his review of the song, where he compares this song to... Biggie Smalls, Juicy. The rap critic's summation of this song. My friends and I were broke, but now we're not. My friends and I were broke, but now we're not. My friends and I were broke, but now we're not. Repeat ad nauseum until the end of time, and it doesn't help that the... Drake's got his monotone voice going on. My friends and I were broke, but now we're not. My friends and I were broke. Started at the bottom, now we're here. Started at the bottom, now we're here. It, it, it does nothing interesting musically, and... The beat just kind of drones on, and uh, as I said, I can't really say much about it, about it because the song doesn't tell you anything. It just says, yeah, I was r really hard off, and now I'm not. You grew up in Toronto, which is, if you grew up poor in Toronto, yeah, maybe you have, a, maybe you have some problems, but then you got on Degrassi. I don't think you had it that bad, Drake. At least not compared to some of the other rappers who talk about how bad they had it, but you don't give any details about... What? You had to overcome, except, you know, traffic jams. Oh. Y yeah. Y yeah, you had it so bad in that traffic. Alright. Uh, there's just nothing to say about this one. I'm cheating with number two. Here it is. Any other song that qualifies for this list that was produced by Mike Will made it. I don't understand this guy's appeal as a producer. So you you have Bitches Love Me, which is at Canadian peaked at number 49, but it was on Billboard at number 39 for the year-end list. Little Wayne, th these bitches got pussies like craters. Little Wayne is a slime ball. Th this song is horrible. The production doesn't help it. Uh, Pour It Up, which is probably Rihanna's worst song ever. Canadian Peak, also at number 49, was on the Billboard list at number 70. The, 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 pour it up, pour it up, pour it up, pour it up, and the, 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 I, 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 there's only so much I can say about Mike Will made, made it beats. They suck. You've got Bugatti by Ace Hood featuring Future, the deplorable Rick Ross, which is on Billboard at number 91. It didn't, I don't think it charted in Canada near as I can tell, but Bugatti I almost left off the list because I was con convinced that people were listening to it because it was so awful, but I, I just hate Mike Will made it as a whole, so... I, I, is he bragging about having the Bugatti? Did he buy it? Did he steal it? I don't know. Oh, but, 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 but... Then there's 23. By Mike Will made it, featuring Miley Cyrus, Wiz Khalifa, Juicy J, peaked in Canada at number 26, and it was on Billboard Peak at number 11 near the end of the year, so it qualifies. This is a song that it appears to be bragging about wearing Air Jordan shoes. Why? Why, 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 why? Oh, I don't get it. Please, stop giving this man work. His work sucks. But, 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 as much as I hate, Mike Will made, made it work. What did I see? I can't even say his name. Mike Will made it work. 
it, it's still not my least favorite song of the year. And I viscerally, viscerally, I, I had to force myself to listen to this entire song. I hate it so much. Song, I, and I used to like this artist. My brother will actually say that, yes, he remembers me singing along with this artist. But no, no more, no more. I can't even listen to the songs from this artist that I used to like. Number one, Work Bitch by Britney Spears, which was on the Canadian list at number 89 and peaked on the Billboard list at number 12. Hey, you want all these nice things? You, you want this Maserati, this Bugatti, this nice house, all this stuff? You too can be auto-tuned and then put to an atrocious, nauseating beat. Oh wait, you're supposed to work for those things? Then why aren't you, Brittany? Why aren't you? You're not working! Why should I? You haven't had to do anything to get this fucking miserable song onto the air. You're not working. You're definitely not uh, working hard. You're, you're, everybody else is doing the work for you. I, I, th th there's so much hypocrisy in this song that it just rubs every nerve in my brain the wrong way. And it really doesn't help that you can see that d despite the fact that this song is an overproduced mess of noise, y you can still hear William's influence in this, in, in the beat in his of it. And, oh, 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 this song is just awful, 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 awful. Y yes, hypocrisy wins out over every other, every other song on this list. I, oh... If if you're going to brag about needing to work, put some actual effort into it. Th this is just nothing. This is... You're contradicting yourself by releasing this song. And that is why Work Bitch by Britney Spears is my most hated song of 2013. If you disagree with me, tell me below. If you agree with me, tell me below. If you think I missed out on any songs, remember there are going to be other songs listed in the description, tell me. But, all right, I'm done, I'm done, I'm done. I'll talk to you folks later with my best list, which I'll actually enjoy talking about. Might not be as amusing for you, because I can't be as animated, but anyway, later.